Oh, I see you. I saw you. <laughs> I thought he could hide. <laughs> What's up everybody, Dread back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the long-awaited revival of the quote-unquote Battlefield Killer World War 3. But before we get into that, be sure to smash that like button, share the video, subscribe and ding that bell if you're new so that you can get more news on World War 3 or games just like it. Alright, let's get into it. The reason why we're going over this today is because I was able to participate in the Veteran Alpha Test, which was only available to people who actually purchased the game back in 2018 as kind of a thank you for supporting the game initially. The funny thing about it is that a community manager over at my.games actually sent me an invite request via Twitter to invite me to the play test but i guess he didn't know that i had already bought it <laughs> he actually sent me another tweet saying the guys over at farm 51 informed me that you already have the game so uh it's actually different for you you gotta do is just download it and you should be able to play the next day and i'm like oh okay it's a little funny interaction there but yeah in my steam library a download for world war 3 pte showed up and basically what that was was a brand new launcher for world war 3 oh great another launcher yippee as if i don't have a whole lot of those i'm glad i kind of pre-downloaded that like right away because that download would have taken freaking forever if i wanted to play it on the day <laughs> that it was supposed to come out because the download on the stupid launcher took basically forever that would have been a disaster and yes it is the pte world war 3 pte on steam not the regular version the pte i noticed that a lot of people were actually downloading the world war 3 regular launcher that's in their steam library and not the pte i don't think the devs made that clear enough but anyways so the first thing that kind of disappointed me about the game was just getting into it and seeing the new UI. They went with such a simplistic look that really made it lose a lot of its characteristics and charm and personality when you compare it to the previous version. Like the only thing that I really liked about the newer UI was just when you're editing your weapons but it's very reminiscent of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019's when you're editing your gun. Like I could definitely see where they got that inspiration from but this has led to a lot of people at least from what I've seen on Twitter calling it generic and that it's lost its identity and uh, this is kind of where I have to disagree with people because there's not a lot of games that are like World War 3 and I mean did World War 3 ever have an identity when people kept comparing it to freaking Battlefield or calling it a Battlefield killer I mean let's not forget when this game actually launched it was like literally right after Battlefield 5 was like taking a shit like I know what they were trying to do there they were trying to steal away freaking players from the Battlefield fan base with the timing of that initial launch I thought they were gonna do a repeat of that when Battlefield 2042 delayed its game again but it seems like they're learning from their previous mistake which is a good thing because the last thing they need to do is botch their launch again. So is World War 3 generic? Not really. Did it lose its identity? Did it have an identity to begin with? I don't know. But maybe you have a different opinion. Tell me down below what you think. But anyways, yeah, I'm definitely disappointed with the UI. I felt like the previous one had a lot more charm, personality, and characteristics, you know. But maybe this is just the first pass of the UI and they're only showing us like a portion of it. Again, this is just a test. Maybe they'll bring back the original UI or make it look even better. Who knows? They're has not been any confirmed release date so they have time to kick that into gear so i mean i guess we'll see in the future so before we move into the next thing i kind of want to talk about the progression system that was featured here in the test now many of you know that this game features a wealth of customization from patches to call tags to your entire uniform helmet plate that's on your chest but the way that it works is that you have to keep playing the game until you unlock everything and it's tied to level so every time that you level up you unlock a bunch of things and i found that leveling up actually isn't that hard hard to do I ended up getting to level 20 within just a few hours and i unlocked quite a bit of stuff but the only thing that's not tied to level is the guns let me explain it. so the way that it works is that you get your base level guns like a one smg one assault rifle one lmg a sniper rifle and a shotgun you get like five basic weapons and let's say for example you keep using the assault rifle not only will you unlock a bunch of attachments while leveling up the weapon but you'll actually unlock other assault rifles but obviously it's going to be like their base level assault rifles you have to actually level them up if you want to get their attachments so it definitely gives players something to do and again leveling up doesn't take that long especially if you're someone that's capping a lot of freaking objectives or if you're someone that's like really good at killing people you can completely customize whatever you want to bring in basically even your call-ins or strikes as they call it if you want to have artillery so that you could drop on a particular objective or if you want a uav or you want a 
drone to come in or drop a tank. They give you three slots for you to use and you can fill them in with whatever calling you want or strike. But of course you can't just call these off willy vanilla, they cost points. And again, the way that you get that is just by capping points or killing people. And to be honest, I've never really seen this as an issue. This calling system is kind of reminiscent of the Call of Duty system where if you kill a bunch of people, you can do those call-ins, but I've never seen this to be like annoying. Like it seems like people seem to be using it very sparingly, only on objectives that need to be capped or pushed into, you know? Like if there's a tank that shows up, then I see like a giant freaking rocket come out of the sky and just hit it. Like people aren't really using it unless they really need to, as far as I can tell. Like the only thing that I haven't seen actually get unlocked was skins, you know, for your uniform and color of the guns and all that. And I'm assuming that's gonna be for the battle pass or the shop right there. Cause again, you guys have to remember that this game is going free to play, which kind of makes me sad as someone who bought it back in 2018 for like 30 bucks or something like that. But I mean, they're gonna have to make their money somehow and that's probably how it's gonna be. You can unlock basically almost everything except for skins as far as I can tell. All right, so let's talk about the meat and potatoes here. So the alpha featured four maps and two game modes, but none of the maps are actually new, but all of them have been revamped and given a bit of a touch up here and there. You can definitely tell because the optimization for all of them feel really good. Like I don't think I really had an issue as far as I can remember. Visually, in my opinion, I think the maps look pretty good. Nothing stellar because, you know, I'm someone who's played with these maps freaking forever at this point. So I'm kind of looking for something new. But I mean, if you like them, then well, you probably like them more than I do at this point. But yeah, you've got Berlin and Warsaw that featured only TDM and Holy Army and Moscow that featured tactical ops. Now, obviously, TDM is TDM. You got two teams versing each other to get to a certain amount of points to win. Wasn't a big fan of that mode because, you know, it's just TDM. But I definitely like tactical ops more. Basically, the way that this game mode works is that there are two objectives. Well, technically there's six, but in order for you to actually win the game, you have to have two objectives connected. So there's A1 and A2. You have to capture both of them to get points. If one of them is not captured, you're not going to get any points. So you have to capture two of the same letter objectives in order for you to actually receive points. The more connected objectives you have, the more points you're going to get. The first to 5,000 wins. It honestly makes for an interesting game mode. And this is where a lot of the tank gameplay and the aerial gameplay come into play. Vehicles in the game, uh, they controlled a little odd for me at first, but I eventually got to use them and like once I understood them, I knew what to do. But I will admit that they were pretty odd at the beginning. When it comes to the movement, the movement was pretty solid, save for a couple of hiccups here and there where I got caught on little things like a rock or something while running around or not being able to jump or vault over a certain walls when I know for a fact that you can actually vault and jump over certain walls. Like the game has that feature, but it's a freaking stickler on what you can actually hop over sometimes. But anyways, the gunplay is honestly the best thing about this alpha test. It's a significant improvement over the previous version. I think they honestly nailed it. You could definitely notice the difference if you were to play the previous one compared to the newer one. If there was anything that I had to criticize about that, I guess it would be that it's kind of a shame that there isn't like different types of reload, like a regular reload and a fast reload, check your ammo and all that stuff. It would be nice to have that feature, but I'm not sure they're going to add it or not. Side note, they have semi-auto, but it's in a really weird spot. It's N. I have to reach my hand across the freaking keyboard to do single shot. They should really switch around calling objectives because calling objectives is like the X button with single shot. Like they should switch those two around in my opinion. Visually, I would say that the guns look really good. Now again, I'm not a freaking gun nut. So I mean, if you guys want to criticize the way that the guns look, then let me know. Like, does it look good to you? I'm a freaking novice at this type of stuff. So I just think, oh, that's an M4. Actually, that's an M16, you know, that type of dude. But yeah, at least I thought it looked good. Uh, I saw a lot of people that were complaining about the HUD. You can actually completely turn that off if you wanted to. Like you can literally turn off everything like no objectives no freaking hud or friendly tags or anything like that if you want like a freaking experience right there i turned off the hud and definitely felt a little more immersive especially when i was trying to call in stuff i'm like crap what was the button again uh six no wait eight uh no seven but anyways the worst thing about this alpha was definitely the sound or the audio footsteps were all over the goddamn place like okay either i didn't hear him or i can hear him but he's nowhere near me like i was in a building and i heard a dude who was like way outside like i can hear him clearly even though he's like nowhere near me and the guys that are near me always kill me because i never freaking heard him gunshots and explosions are really nothing to write home about i mean the rpg is probably the only one that actually sounded pretty decent but they seriously need to make their guns sound more beefier at least in my opinion to make a tank sound like a tank and machine gun sound like a machine gun footsteps don't even sound like footsteps like you literally speed it up just a little bit and it sounds like a freaking choo-choo train uh, speaking of which <laughs> 
<laughs> Look at trade in the background. And yeah, so the audio and sounds were pretty bad. I really like the backpack mechanic where you can like switch out a bunch of attachments if you have them in there in the middle of the battle. That was pretty cool. Whenever I had to like get into a long range situation, I pull out my scope and start picking on people left and right. And uh, yeah, overall, I definitely had a fun time with this. It was definitely addicting. And you know, I mean, if it doesn't have a bad launch, it could definitely give Battlefield a run for its money. But the thing that I really worry about is what exactly is going to be in this season pass? Like how egregious is this monetization going to be? That's what I really want to know because it is going free to play. Like if it's just skins and nothing that actually affects gameplay, then okay, we got ourselves a winner here, but I guess we'll see. What are your thoughts? So that's where I'm going to end the video. If you enjoyed the fact that I covered games like World War 3, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon or click on the join button that's down below. Every donation counts. Help me, I am poor. Yeah. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more news on World War 3 or games just like it. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.